So here I am, we are live and we are talking about Black Friday. So, Noir Vendredi. <laughs> you ready to have fun with this? Is anybody going to be there tonight? Severin and Vinegar Syndrome are really pulling at the stops this year. Uh, they're looking. Hey, Danny, welcome. You're the first person here. And we're talking Black Friday on a Saturday. It is less than, really, it's really less than a week away from the big, the big time, the big sale. Are you ready, Danny? Do you know what you're going for? So I thought tonight I'd give some suggestions for us, like if you're looking in the back catalogs for both Severin and Vinegar Syndrome, Aside from that, we're going to talk about what exactly is going on right now with Severin and Vinegar Syndrome with these sales. And uh, how this could very well be one of the most interesting years yet for uh, John releases on Black Friday. And I just got photobombed by a kitty cat. I'm not sure if you can see him in the background, but he was there a second ago. I have to say... Looks like it might be a pretty quiet night. So I am going to go in here and open up my YouTube. -y. I have a feeling that uh, this could very well be a very short video. Just <laughs> if we don't, uh, if it doesn't pick up a little bit sooner. <laughs> We're like a minute in, and there's like, there's me, you, Danny, and there's another person who hasn't said yes yet, or hasn't said yes, hasn't said hello yet. I'm Jack Frost. Ah, yes. In the Call of the Night is one that I really want. That's, that's a, that is like a must for me. Um, I'm super excited about, about some of the titles from both companies, actually. I was iffy. Hey, Vinny, welcome. <laughs> on, a, on a couple of the seven ones, but there's a couple that actually interest me. One that I don't know a lot about. Hey, Nethead, welcome. Hey, Shadow. Yeah, there's been a ton. Oh, that, Jay, that Christmas evil slip looks sweet. I know the artwork, and I'm sure you've probably seen it or it's been Googled, uh, but... Uh, it's the artwork with the uh, with the bulb, right? The Christmas bulb. I worked today, so I didn't really get to see like a lot of it. I remember seeing the artwork on the uh, on on Vinegar Serums. So we got like a, a ton of like uh, Black Friday news drop. We have two more titles from Severin uh, that have dropped. There's five titles in total, uh, two that we don't know about, uh, and for some reason, and this is an odd one, Severin are only selling their Black Friday titles. On Black Friday. So after the sale is over, they won't be sold. For well, we know one of the one of the steps. We know one of them is going to be Christmas Evil. Well, to, uh, it would be nice if it's if you could, if you got a choice of either or. I'm guessing you're probably either or. Like in the last sale, you could buy the slips alone or you could buy the slips with the film. So if you don't have like The Undertaker or Jack Frost, it's a great time to pick them up with the, you know, with the slips available. And I actually did bring over the Jack Frost and Undertaker slips, which you've seen here many times. But kind of the, for pe if anybody came in and were kind of curious and kind of wondering. So this was one of their very first like slips, if not their first slip. The Undertaker. And it seems pretty standard and it seems pretty plain until you really, really look at it. And you just get to see the kind of the grotesqueness of it. And, and it really suits the film. Uh, the Undertaker slip was the first slip that they ever did. And as such, it was uh, it was tighter than the, uh, than the rest of them. I know, that's a really strange move. Uh... I get what they're trying. They're trying to like create like a uh, a need to get the titles, you know, to have to go to their Black Friday sale to get those titles. 
Uh, I really want the wild world of, Jane's, of Jane Mansfield. But uh, I don't know if, if I can afford it on Black Friday, uh, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I don't have a lot of like Black Friday money. I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, other things take priority. Uh, but uh, so I had to like kind of go in between. We are talking Black Friday, 13th Wolfman. Severin and Vinegar Syndrome, major announcements for Black Friday. We're going to look at some stuff that I'm going to suggest for you, for people to pick up if they're, if they're trolling the back catalogs of uh, either Severin or Vinegar Syndrome to pick out, pick out stuff. I'm going to talk about how the Black Friday thing kind of works. And uh, we're a lot of people here, <laughs> I understand, are excited that this, that both Undertaker and Jack Frost, look how sexy that is, guys, if you don't have it. It is going to be a race to get these slips. The old thanks, Shadow, because I, because the way that they worded it, uh, and maybe it's just my you know my reading, uh, <laughs> my lack of reading comprehension, um, but I it, thought okay, Severn are only having the, like Wild World James Mansfield is what I'm looking more forward to for a long time. I don't want to have to buy it on a day when it's going to sacrifice. Like I don't, I I want the Angel trilogy. Uh, that's you know that's a must for me. I'm. Uh, I heard rumors, and it was just like conjecture, that a possibility for the Vinegar Syndrome title. Nice. Does that is that it already? You must have got yours from Indicator, Ken. You know, like directly from Indicator. Because I ordered mine from Amazon UK a while back, and I don't think it's time for it to come out yet. Yeah, I think that these two, these two here are going to be like two, two of the big ones. They're going to sell fast. Scalpers are going to be looking for this. Hey, Cat Lover, welcome, dude. I got got your message. I got I haven't responded to it yet, by the way. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think this is going to be a big one. Like even though it's like it's it's a basically. Because people missed out on it. These were early, uh, like, vinegar syndrome slip covers. If you don't have this, this is freaking fun. I'm not going to lie. This look, look how fun this is. I could do this for hours. I'm, I, I think I'm shiny things. I'm like a cat in human form. Shiny things. This is going to be pretty, pretty wicked. Now, there is a Mondo film being put out on Black Friday. From uh, Severin Films, Mondo Bandolano. I, I don't remember what the name it is. <laughs> I am pretty much even cat. I think that's why my better half. That makes sense now because she's a cat person. Obviously, the real reason that she's with me is because I'm a cat in human form. Hellraiser bus set. Is this by Wow? Is are they doing this because? Or is this by who put the Hellraiser bus set? I didn't know. I did not hear about it. I when you said like set, I went to where I was like again like. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> not until my tummy gets down a little bit. Let's see. It's having pre on Black Friday. So the one thing that you should know, Mondo Bellardo. Do anybody know what the hell Mondo Bellardo is? Because <laughs> uh, I don't. It says like a Mondo film and. Then the show's Boris Karloff, and I have no, I'm not going to lie, I'm not even going to pretend, no idea, zilch on this film. Uh, Mondo films are not exactly the type of films that I say, you know, Boris Karloff. Hey Jesse, how's it going, man? Yeah, that's that. See, that does make it confusing. Now, last year, uh, my better half got me the the two Mondo ones, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't gotten around to watching them yet. Uh, not that I, I that like the I don't want don't like them. I really do, uh, and I do want to watch them. But it's just I've gotten so much so much stuff that it takes a while to get to uh, some of the stuff. Return. I don't know. Return Living Dead girls really well. Uh, I had to look that up a bit. Uh, I know I've seen it. I know I've seen the movie, but uh, I'll be honest with you. If oh, it's been a, it's been a while. 
guys since I've seen uh, that film. And I can remember Turn. I can remember Living Dead Girl by Jean Roland. I remember that one pretty well. But uh, I don't remember Turn of the Living Dead Girls. So for me to say anything about that film, I'd be lying. I'd be lying to you. So here's the one. Revenge of the Living Dead Girls. It is a French film. You're right about that. So, one thing to know. When it comes to the Black Friday sales, uh, afterwards, they usually ship out after Black Friday. So, you're going to have to be like a bit patient, especially this time of year when it comes to companies like Vinegar Syndrome. And uh, they're... Hey, Adrian. Uh, they're uh, they're going to have a lot of sales. Now, I have to let you know, Severin is a great company, but a lot of their Black Friday-ish titles, I'm not sure if it's going to be like last year, but Skinner. <laughs> hey, hey, Job. Uh, Skinner and uh, the all the colors of Jalo Set. Remember that? This is a Black Friday one. I think I got it in February, January, late, late January, February. So... Spookies is hurt is strongly, you know, suggested that it could be the other one that was mentioned that was kind of mentioned. There's a, there's a few actually that people mentioned, but one in particular was Beware Children at Play, uh, which is a trauma film. And uh, I'll be honest with you, it's something that I would eventually pick up, but I'll be completely blunt. If Beware Children at Play is the other one in the package, uh, unless I'm really wowed by everything else i'm probably just going to get the angel collection and T tam and the t-rex and the vsas on their own and maybe maybe this maybe the spookies i wouldn't get i wouldn't like go all in if beware children at play was uh, was the title uh okay film uh nothing uh monumental nothing where i gotta be oh my god i gotta have this uh i know they're gonna fancy it up a bit <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not a fan. I'm, I would love to uh, to own the film eventually, but it's not something I would that I need to grab. Uh, it's not like the children. Uh, like the children is one that is, is high on my list of you know of Vinegar Syndrome gets. Uh, Where children to play? Not so much. It's so oh, it's all right. Uh, didn't blow me away. But uh, and and it's, again, it's been years since I've seen it. Like I'm, I, it's not maybe I'm being unfair, but it, it doesn't excite me. It doesn't sound. It sounds like a good certain. Hey, Ricky, it's like a certain month title, but it doesn't sound like and it doesn't sound like a Black Friday. Wow, this is a special title. Scre screenplay, I wouldn't mind. Corpse Grinders is gone? No, no, not not even close who can kill a child. Uh, no, it's not of that it's not that quality, not of that oak. It is at the end of it is a trauma film, so you have to know kind of what you're getting into. And there are good trauma films, some great trauma films. I'm a trauma fan. Uh, I have met Mr. Lloyd himself, and uh, he was an amazingly great guy. It's just that it uh it doesn't excite me. In the way, like, say, and I know this is silly. Uh, like, there are people, I'm sure, that's their movie. That's their jam, right? But I'm more excited about things like, I would love to have the wild world of Jane Mansfield. To start Jallo. Uh, Tenebrae, Deep Red, Strange Vices, Mrs. Ward. Uh, if you like the really sleazy stuff, uh, and you don't mind that. Uh, Strip Nude for Your Killer, uh, Sister Versala. Don't Torture a Duckling, Woman, uh, let's name it again, and The uh, the Woman in Lizard Skin. That, that's, there's a starter for you. That's a starter kit for you. And uh, go from there. If, if you really want to get into it, like start with the Argento stuff, like from the beginning and, and go from there. 
Lizard one more. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. I messed it up. Uh, I will mess something up every video. The children. The children was a, on a trauma acquired film. A ch Beware Children to Play wasn't. I think so. Uh, I don't keep up as much on Garage House, not because I don't like them. I don't have any of their titles in my collection. I don't think I do. Maybe I have one of their titles. Did they put out Spider's Web? You know, the uh, if they put that out, I have one Garage, garage uh, House title in my collection, which was given to me by uh, a, a viewer that, unfortunately, I don't see on air anymore. Um, well, I hope it's doing well. And has not gone to the dark side. Web the Spider, thanks. That's the only Garage House title I got. Uh, so I do want their trailer ones. I really want their trailer titles. Killer of Dolls. That should be cool. That's a wicked film. It's a strange film. Uh, I wouldn't consider Black Sabbath or Black Sunday Jallos. Like good gothic horror. Like great gothic horror. Uh, Ronan Flick says have awesome slips. They're a bit on the pricey side for me. Like for we're I'm in Canada and I'm in like Atlantic Canada. Uh, it gets a bit pricey. Uh, again, that was uh, I have two of their titles of the Ronan Flick's titles with with the slips. I they're gorgeous. Uh, great artwork by the way. But I. Uh, I got them like again they were they were donated to the movie library and I did manage to grab like a scorpion releasing one when I was in a oh, from Amazon actually because Amazon gets some scorpion stuff and I love that fact thanks to know this year again Severin is doing a, a giveaway Not this year. I mean, normally, I, you know, I'll go out, you know, I'll take a, a little bit of money and uh, I'll grab some stuff. But uh, this year is really, this real year is tight for us. Uh, my better half, you know, she went to Morocco. I, I was on my own for a bit. Uh, she's going back like her family or having like a family reunion in, in December. So she will be going back to Morocco. Uh, that's a cool one. Um, and uh, I will be going for a week, so that's going to cost uh, a bit of money. And of course, you know, getting stuff for the kids and stuff like that. So anything I get is going to be very limited. Uh, but I'll be very—I'm going to be very grateful for anything that I do get. So it's always a plus, right? Vincent is my thing, man. <clears throat> and the Angel Trilogy is something that was on my wish list. I wanted to. I wanted all the Brunomatais. Actually, not so much the Cannibal Brunomatais, but I wanted the other ones. The other hell I wanted. And Zombie the Beginning was interesting to me. So, uh, those were ones that I wanted to pick up, but I didn't get a chance to get them, unfortunately. Uh, you think like, oh, it's $20, you know, no, 20 American dollars, which... The other hell look, does look really good. It's tamer than a lot of the non-exploitation films of the past, I think. Uh, the Bruno in a Bundle, yeah. I thought about it, but I couldn't afford it. If I, like, if I had gotten that, uh, I would not be able to get anything from, like, the... Uh, for Black Friday. It just makes it more creative for me. Okay, so Severin is going to be giving away Jack the Ripper. So the the only year and the the first and only year that Severin won out for me for, against Vinegar Syndrome was the year that they put out this film. And this is Jack the Ripper. It, for those that aren't familiar with this one, uh, a lot of other Jack the Ripper films and subsequently that came after this kind of follow this pattern anytime you think of like uh like a sherlock holmes going against jack the ripper that type of thing uh 
or just like a really good Jack the Ripper film, it it goes, you know, it starts with this. It's probably the best slip cover in my opinion that they ever put out as well. It's got a very like pop esque look to it. This came out what was it? 2017, if I'm correct. Um, and that year was the one year Black Friday came, and I didn't order anything from Vinegar Syndrome. It was the year of the ice of Ice Cream Man. Remember Ice Cream Man? Remember that came out? Uh, so it was that year. But not only do I love this movie, but this movie is a, was a favorite of my, of, of my dad's. So my father was a really big fan of this film. And I knew that... Oh no, the film is from like the, the 60s. 50s or 60s? 50s or 60s, one of the two. <laughs> uh, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, he's still waiting to hear back in the surgery. He hasn't gotten that, actually. Well, the uh, there's a certain version of it is. Just got to check something here, guys. Make sure everything's okay. So there's a certain version of this that's actually coming free with their uh, with certain things. So let me just look. I'm going to look under on the Twitter on Facebook. Let's go look on Facebook. I go to Severin because they did pub an announcement today. Dude, you haven't seen that one then. What's really cool is it has like a uh, it's a black and white film, but it has like a color insert at the end of it, which is really cool. So this is what we know so far. I want to go to uh, to to Vinegar Sternum as well. So there is Mondo Bolardo and the Wild Wild World of Jane Mansfield. And the Wild Wild World. Oh, Mondo Bolardo gives you a bonus movie, The Orientals. Uh, Mondo Bilardo, Wild Wild World of Jane Mansfield gives you wa weird wild wild weird wonderful Italians. Um, and an interview. I, I like the comic book of From Hell, but I didn't like the movie that much. To be, you know, to be blunt. So, what am I looking for? Uh, let's try down to this. They're usually pretty good with this stuff. With this information. I find down to this are really good for getting out some of this information. Although I do sometimes have to go off their site so that I don't find out too much. Uh, all right, Black Friday things for Severin. We're going to break it up from Severin and Vinegar Sternum. We'll do both of them. So 50% off most Severin titles in our store. Now there's a there's going to be a, a caveat. We're going to get to that. 50% off all Intervision titles. So if you guys have not yet picked up Things or Murder Lust, now's the chance. Free Jack the Ripper Continental version, Blu-ray, in all orders. Over thirty dollars. I don't know. Uh, that that's I never got the slips last time. And anybody here that got slips can tell Michael around how much they cost. Eleven brand new merch items. Now here's the caveat. Here's what's excluded from Severin's sale. Releases from the past six months. I'm not joking. This is the thing. Releases from the past six months are not 50% off or discount, I don't think. So that means ones you can't get on sale are Night Killer, Robo War, Beast in Hell, The, the Wax Mask, Killer Crocodile, Peg Paganini Horror, Bl Blyeth, Demon of Incest, Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory, Gwendolyn, The Boss Next Door, Vi, Peanut Butter Solution. And, of course, the, the documentary Masters of Dark Shadows. On all merch items and all bundles within the last six months. That's... Now, here's a list of 50% off titles for, from Severin that will be 50% off for the very first time. You ready for this? So, there is The Uncanny, both editions. St. Bernard, again, both editions. Mass Mutilator, Death Warmed Up, 
if you guys want to be that New Zealand splatter horror, both editions. Escape from Women's Prison. Anybody wants to buy that and send it to me, feel free. Uh, Emmanuel and Francois, same thing, both editions. <laughs> the Hemisphere box set. Wow, okay, that's big. The Hemisphere box set, including its individual titles. So you can finally pick up that. If you haven't picked up the Hemisphere horror box set, super cool. Uh, lots and lots of fun. You'll definitely like it. Uh, if you like that type of stuff. Invasion of the Blood Farmers, Next to Kin, great film. Uh, Jack the Ripper, that we're going to get the full edition of it. Uh, Eco and the Forbidden, sorry, uh, Mondo Fredo and Mondo Bizarro. Skinner, All the Colors of Giallo documentary. And the fantastic Sergio Martino film, some asked about Giallo before, All the Colors of the Dark. All of these will be on sale, 50% off, for Black Friday. And they had mentioned that the Hemisphere Horrors box was lower in, in count before. At half price, I can't see anybody that's, that looked at this title before that hasn't grabbed it, not grabbing the Hemisphere Horror box set for Black Friday from Severn. This is going to be a good one. All right, two and five new releases, two that they're not going to tell you to Black Friday. Uh, this is what we know so far. That the two releases that they're not telling us that are sold on Black Friday will only be sold from Black Friday to Cyber Monday and will not be available ever again, much like their edition of Comet Shock. Uh, so there's going to be a two disc limited Blu ray edition with a slip cover that's limited to 3,000 copies. So there's going to be a, another Black Friday exclusive limited to 3,000 copies. This is, this is the uh, Severn. We'll get the Vinegar Center after. Uh, Mondo Bellordo, limited to 2,000 copies with the bonus movie. Wild Wild World of James Mansfield, again limited to 2,000 copies. Anybody wants to get me a Christmas gift? That's a good one. Uh, Revenge of the Living Dead Girls, limited to, to 2,000 copies. Uh, so those are going to be the ones that are, that are, that are going to be pretty limited. Now that's on the Severn side of it. Let's, let's look at Vinegar Syndrome. I do apologize. I missed some of your, uh, your messages, and I will get back to them. So, Wonder Women, I don't know, man. Uh, is it not anymore? Is it just like for a while? Because uh, there's been a few movies. What site did I just read it from? I read from Don the Disc, 30 Month Man. Because different cuts, different features. You're right, dude. So, Wonder Women, which temporarily went out of stock. There's rights issues. Uh, it's back. Wonder Women is coming back. So if you didn't get get a chance to pick up Wonder Women, I did because thank you, Bay Street Video. Um, it will be back. With slipcovers. A thousand slipcovers. And 50% off. I have actually, you know, I haven't watched yet because it's one... Wonder Women is one of those movies that's an action, kind of a cheesy, fun action movie. Uh, and my better half loves those. We watch all of the Sierra Santiago movies together. Uh, yeah, Jesse's seen it. Um, so uh, that's one that I've been waiting on her for. And obviously she's been gone away for a month. And, uh, you know, we get to, we rarely get to sit down. Like, we're both working so we, now, so we rarely get to sit down and watch, like, you know, a movie together at the same time. We're pretty exhausted. Uh Maybe Scream Factory, but uh, Vinegar Center is probably like the close second. But Kino, too. I got my three top, well, no, actually Arrow. What am I saying? I got a, a, a literal shelf of Arrow. See that shelf behind me with the uh, with candy samples there? The Ross Meyer one? That entire shelf, that's, that's all Arrow. That's like nothing else but Arrow on that. Like all the way up and down that shelf. So I have a lot of Scream Factory, Vinegar Syndrome, Arrow, and Kino. So, they have found a, so a hundred lenticular slipcovers for Jack the Frost and a hundred containing The Undertaker. And yes, they will be back in stock. And yes, they will be 50% off. There will be their 2020 yearly subscription, which I can't afford. But for anybody that can, it is awesome. Oh, yeah, I do. I have a lot of shameless. I, that. 
Oh, I think you'll, you'll be able to get them both, actually. There will be the, the VSA titles. There is a ton of stuff coming out from Vinegar Stern. There's going to be new merchandise. There's going to be new... Uh, you do need some Shamus here collection. Ricky, Shamus is a great way to start like looking at Jowls. <laughs> Everyone needs a little Shameless, especially when it's ones like Sister Versla. Hey, Evening Dale. Here's the thing, Shadow. Hey, Chris. They can be upset about, like, slipcovers or whatever being reprinted. But anything that peeves off scalpers makes me kind of happy. Not going to lie. Anytime scalpers get frustrated, I become a happy man. So when they're upset about the indicators, like, uh, not the demon... I was like high-fiving myself the entire time. Well, actually you don't. If you're looking at shameless stuff, a lot of shameless stuff, by the way, do, are region-free. So you don't have to wait to get a region-free player to play a lot of shameless stuff. A lot of it is region zero, so you can actually get their stuff. And a lot of their stuff is, like, they do have some Blu-rays. They do have a lot of DVDs. Well, with Night of the Demon, there's only supposed to be like 3,000 copies. Then the up that... 5,000 copies, <laughs> then you have that again to 10,000 copies. Uh, you got, yeah, you got to look at the ones that, that, are, that you, and, and even then they went and sought out. Washing machine? You got a new, okay, you got an actual washing machine. I thought you actually meant the movie washing machine. Well, that one is region free, I think. That'd be excellent. What well, they do that though, because see, Arrow is just the distributor, like for for Shameless. Uh, they're, blind. they're not actually like the, uh, you know, they're not actually the people that are, that actually put that uh, that makes the Shameless films. Shameless is still its own company. They just lost their distributor, and uh, Arrow came, you know, went, went to bat and brought them up there. Oh, that sucks, dude. Yeah, there's a few. I'll actually, one of these nights, tell you what I'll do, guys. One of these nights, I'll, I'll go, I'll look through my Shameless collection, I'll bring them on here, and I'll show you the ones that are all region-free. That way you'll know. So if anybody wants to dive in and get some stuff, uh, that'll be, like, a good way to, uh, to, figure, to figure it out. Now, I do recommend, if you have Shameless titles in your collection, put them somewhere where if you've, if you've got, like, kids or uh, you, you've got... Family coming over. Well, no, church was released in North America as well, so they could that one couldn't be region free. Um, then you may want to hide or put those shameless titles in a place where uh, where kids aren't going to see them. <laughs> because this, if there's any nudity in a shameless movie, it will be on the back of the cover, and sometimes on the front. A washing machine gets super raunchy. So yeah, that's definitely one. Watch one for the kids. Do UK fans really get mad about that? Um, so it's, that's actually being put out again by uh, Severin, right? Is it Severin? Or, no, Vinegar Syndrome is putting out Satan's Baby Doll. Mal Malabamba. I showed it on here. Uh, I, I fluked. Uh, the first region free t player that I got, well, I actually surprisingly was at walmart it was a seeky s-e-i-k-i it was under 50 dollars. i think it was around like 35 40 bucks at the time um then i went to uh, a oh god it's not no longer around. it was an electronics place and i found another seeky and i gave it to my cousin actually along with uh tokyo decadence i think was from aerodrome and uh and I gave him like another couple like movies. 
<laughs> yeah, isn't that great, Chris? And of course, I also got one at Canadian Tire. It was it was the last Seeky that I picked up, and it looked like a PS3, done, like done in that kind of like style. And I still have that one. That one's up. That one's downstairs here. Well, not downstairs here, but you know, on my on the second floor. So there's a ton of stuff to pick up for for Black Friday. So, Severin Vinegar Syndrome. Which which one are you guys going for? Is there a company you're going all in on for Black Friday? And I really do want to know. That's the one you have? It's pretty cool. It's got it had a newer remote than the older one did. And I bet you remember those that four digit code. Four five four five is worth seeing. Yeah. <laughs> for me it's vinegar syndrome. Did Twaddle Time ever have a Black Friday sale? I honestly don't know. Dude, you're lucky. <laughs> Hopefully next year that'll be me. Hopefully next year I'll be in Morocco by the time <laughs> the Black Friday comes around. And I'll be coming, I'll be visiting like either London or Ontario or Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia to actually go deal with Black Friday. Wait, are you the person that always asks about ice? Are you? <laughs> um, I would love to see that, actually. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, ice is one that I would uh, that I would love to get. It's better to go with BF... BF or Black Friday or Free Worldwide Shipping Vinegar Center. <laughs> really, I heard it's pre mutual fund withdrawals. Did you really? <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, legitimately, did one year uh, a few years back. That that's that's the truth. Hey, Alan. Do they? I love Amsterdam. Actually, that's uh, Dick Moss. I uh, love his films. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go for Black Friday because although it's gonna be free worldwide shipping on December the 13th, the titles aren't gonna be like half priced the way they are now. I have to understand a lot of the newer stuff for Vinegar Syndrome, like the, the brand new stuff, obviously is not gonna be like Unmasked Part 25 is not gonna be 50 percent off. Like I don't, we wouldn't expect it to be, but it's, they're not gonna go back six months like Severn did. Uh, that six month thing has always confused me with Severin. It, it, it I, I think it limits like uh, what a lot of people would pick up in the sale. I can understand going back to like two months or maybe three. But uh, six months, kind of half a year. Satan's Blood? Which one's. Satan slaves. Watching like Ghost is Black Friday. I actually have that here somewhere, so maybe <laughs> not a bad idea. Yeah, seven to six months. Uh, I think Vinegar Syndrome go back like two or three months max. But even like their newer titles, there's still percentages off of them. I doubt very much that there's going to be like fifty percent off, like uh, the Anvil set or something like that. I wouldn't expect it to be. Uh, but uh, there will be like maybe a small percent off. Cyber Monday deals usually when it comes to like the movie sales, they just go straight on through. Uh, you know, from Black Friday to Cyber Monday. Uh, Cyber Monday is usually something when you're looking at like like games, or uh, or maybe an Amazon thing, or you know maybe some of the stores. But really, uh, a lot of the places start you know like late Thursday night, and uh, or if you're if it's a a retail store like a Best Buy or a or a Target or a Walmart, they usually start on Thursdays. So you can probably go in there and like right now, there's stuff right now. If you go to Walmart right now, you can pick up like 
let's go Pikachu or Eevee for 39 bucks. You can go grab like a Sega Mini for $64 Canadian. I love Murder Obsession. <laughs> Thank you for watching it, by the way. That's, that, that is an older video. And I'm kind of proud of that one. Uh, so, uh, and I love the film. The Rero did a great job with it. I love the weird, strange titles. Speaking of which, tell you what, I'm going to give you some titles from each company that were put out a while back. <laughs> Everybody asks that. Uh, Terminal Island, I think, is coming in 2020 from what, I'll, from what I've heard. Uh, Last House on Dead End Street, I'm pretty sure. The Pin Wow, you have been back a while. The Pin Chronicles. I remember those. Uh, I remember doing the H the H and V Chronicles uh, when H and V was closing down. That actually brought some people in at the time as well. Uh, but you guys have been. You guys are like OGs. So I'm going to go through seven titles. I'm going to go through a few Vinegar Syndrome titles. I'll go through Vinegar Syndrome first because um, the more recent stuff. The Pin Screen Factory rant. <laughs> That's the one about like uh, the movie I've actually got, right? <laughs> Nightbreed, and I actually got an edition for my uh, for my daughter as well. So shame on you, Scream Factory. I remember that. That that got me a lot of views and a lot of a bit of hate. Not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, here's a few vinegar syndrome titles that I think you should like at least look into for Black Friday, and then I'm going to show you a few seven titles that I think you should look into as well. Uh, these are ones that I think got passed by, and I think the ones that I'm showing you, there's two here with slip covers. I think the slip covers, these are still available. If they're not, I do apologize. CRT TV. You got an old school TV? Uh, because Region free like stuff. I, I got see that there. That's like region zero. I have an edition of mouth camera. <laughs> Is that the one I got the Korean edition? Did you see that video where I unboxed like what I thought was going to be Criterion movies? And I was super excited about it. And I opened them up and they're from eBay and they're so not Criterion. One was a mouth camera uh, and another one. And I, I can't remember what the other one was, but I was so you could literally see like my face like dropping and melting from the disappointment of that video. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's worth checking out. Sound might be a little iffy, but still. So The Killing Kind, uh, if this one has slipped, is still available, I do recommend it. This is a really good film. Uh, great cast. Is it really? <laughs> you just like to see my pain, man. Uh, is it like, it's not, uh, it's not the, the, the sleaziest kind, but it's a, uh, I think it's a really fun film. Uh, uh, a bit over a hundred, hundred and something. I counted them actually the other day. I heard. Hopefully it's good. It'll all depend on the casting of who you get to play Freddy. Sudden Fury. This is a Canadian film. It's Canucks by Chase, and so you know I'm going to love it. Uh <laughs> Definitely worth checking out. I did found this one fun. Some people find it a little bit slow, but I think it's a really cool film. Love the slip cover, by the way. Definitely think it's one worth checking out. Now I want to grab some of the other ones. This one here, if you haven't got it, well, it might be a good time to get it. There's a slip coming. And from the peak that we've seen of it, it is going to be a glorious slip. This is Christmas Evil. And if you have never seen this film, see this film. Uh, there's actually a kind of a cool commentary with John Waters on here as well. <laughs> One of my favorites and another reason to get this, in December, I am doing the Holiday Horrors and this will definitely be in the Holiday Horrors. So if you want to be talking live about Christmas Evil. Make sure you pick it up if you haven't picked it up. I'm sure if you don't have this movie already in your collection, that slip is probably going to win you over. Death Machines. It looks super science fiction. Not at all. But is it fun? Oh, yes. Yes, it is fun. 
Uh, it's hard to believe this is not by Sergio Santiago, uh, especially if you've seen the film. The Death Machines are, well, you have to see. Ice Cream Man. If you've been like, if you have not picked this up for some reason, like this is one that's like kind of passed you by, say you're watching the Joe Bob Briggs stuff, <laughs> uh, then this this is a definite must. If you're a last driving like fan, well, you're good. Remember Joe Bob Briggs Monster Vision? Well, this has Monster Vision on it. You actually are going to get to see some old school Monster Vision with Joe Bob Briggs on this Ice Cream Man release. So make sure to check that one out. Omen's Torment. I will not stop uh, like plotting anything by Roberta Finley, but this is her favorite. This one is her... It does. The guy from Evil Speak, Clint Howard, uh, who started as a, one of the... Uh, hard to believe, but he was one of those cute kid actors. Hey, Adam. Yeah, it has been a while. There might be one. There might be one called Santa Slay. You're not a Clint Howard fan? It's really, this is a really good one, actually. If you grew up on Monster Vision, Adam, you owe it to yourself if you don't have Ice Cream Man to grab Ice Cream Man because you're going to get some Monster Vision goodness on that. And remember when I said, like, beware, children at play wouldn't be something that would make me buy the... Uh, the bundle just watch them put it a really good edition and make me like totally eat my words because you know because that's what vinegar syndrome does all the time they make me eat my words with stuff like that and scream factory the ones too blood hook it's gory but not in but it's comedic so it's not it's nothing that's going to like go way too over the top that you're not going to watch it blood hook is one that i do recommend it's weird it's an odd film uh, I kind of want to watch Bloodhook tonight, but I got to go to the flea market tomorrow. But this, I did, I know, but it's such a cool one though. I missed the, I missed the slip on, on uh, on a couple of them. Now where's the, da, 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 Severin. Pet and. I can tell you one thing. You want to. Is similar to Deep Freeze. I'm not sure what Deep Freeze is. Uh, it's probably one I've seen that I don't remember. Ice Cream Man is a fun, cheesy little one. Basically, Clint Howard plays this guy that grows up, and uh, but he sees like an ice cream man, like an isle of his, basically. Um, something happens to him, won't say what. So when he he grows up, he becomes an ice cream guy, but he's kind of like psychotic ice cream guy, and there's like a lot of big actors in it. And, uh, well, big actors, big character actors. And there's a lot of cheesiness, and there's, it's just weird. It, it's fun. As for Severin, totally just pick up some Severin. These are definitely a, a past the six month range. So, Skinner, which I didn't bring over here, but if you don't have Skinner, Skinner, yeah, grab Skinner. It's a really good movie. That's Sexploitation. Still one of my favorite documentaries. I watched this around, I don't know, 12 or 13 times at least. Uh, this is done um, by Frank Hannelauder, the guy that made, basket, made Basket Case films. And uh, now, so far, there's only one. There was like, there's always gonna, there's always been like that kind of rumor that they're gonna do a Basket, a Ice Cream Man 2, but as of yet, they haven't done it. But you don't know how many times that movie's been rumored to be coming out. This is a really good one. And the good thing is it's uh they did this in conjunction with something weird video who we'll put out a lot of the uh kind of the tamer sexploitation stuff. Jack Frost is, is is cheesy. It's uh it's cheesy fun. Um Shannon Elizabeth has a very memorable role in it, maybe a little bit disturbing. Um uh, it's the wise cracking uh bad guy. It's what it is. Basically, there's this guy, uh, you know, that's what he's Jack Frost. He's, he's a serial killer. He was caught by this uh, by this sheriff, and uh, chemicals are 
he's, he's in an accident as he's being like brought to a prison, or as he's being brought to be killed. He's in this chemical accident that, and that has his molecules all going to, uh, very tongue in cheek, tongue through cheek, almost like, um, go, goes into the snow and he becomes this snowman. Uh, it, it's worth seeing. It really is. It, it's cheesy. It's fun. It's much better than the sequel, which kind of kind of rips off Gremlins too. But uh, the first one is actually a lot of fun because it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it takes itself too seriously in the places where it's going to be funny to take itself too seriously. But yeah, grab this one here. There's a lot of stuff. Not only does it have a, a long documentary, like we're talking about 136 minutes, and I, I mean it's a fascinating. Ice Cream Man is cheesy, yes. It is It is meant to be cheesy. There's a sequence where he has a big ice cream cone and a person's head on it. So that's the kind of cheesiness we're getting with Ice Cream Man. Uh, I'm not joking. It, it is super cheesy fun. And Olivia Hussey is an Ice Cream Man from Black Christmas, my favorite movie of all time. Uh, so uh, there's, you know, it playing a very odd role. Uh, you you got to see Ice Cream Man to believe it. It's just one of those. And I don't think it's like bad. I mean, it, it's it's good. It's like cheesy good. But it's definitely good. Definitely grab that sexploitation. Uh, people mi miss out on this one because it's not a gore fest. It's not one of his like horror ones. Uh, but Lucio Fulci's movie, The Devil's Honey, uh, I think is a brilliant film. It's probably one of his uh, one of the uh, the the best films that he uh, that he ever made. Was there a low budget? I didn't know that actually, because Ice Cream has pretty low budget itself. Uh, I love this film, and uh, for me, it showed what he could do. You have taste, Ricky. You have taste. Super underrated. Devil's Honey one to pick up. When people are talking about like the trailer traumas and all that type of stuff, one of the trailer ones that a lot of people miss, forget about. Uh, it did, and I missed out on that. Was Kung Fu Trailers of Fury. This is really, really fun. Uh, Severin doesn't get like much credit for the uh, a, a massacre time uh, for for these here. Well, I never hear anybody talk about them, but they're they're a lot of fun, and you can just turn them on and watch them. Have them in the background if you want to. Have them on at a party. Kung Fu Trailers of Fury is really cool. Uh, and as an auto commentary with Rick Myers, who is like kind of the expert when it comes to to that type of film. Absurd. Or other words, the real Halloween too. Absurd stars George Eastman and Edmund Edward Prudhoe, right? That's his name. Prudhoe. Edmund Prudhoe. I always get his name wrong from uh, Don't Open to Christmas. Uh, I actually really like this film. Love the score, which comes with the movie. It's kind of an unofficial sequel to uh, to Anthropopicus, but I love this a lot more than Anthropopicus. Actually, Anthropopicus was just too much gore for me. This one kind of kind of it just had a weird, unique surrealness to it. Football, <laughs> but anybody that's seen Absurd will say football and you won't get it until you see the movie absurd but once you see it you're in on the joke hey joseph welcome man uh if you haven't picked it up again one of the great documentaries it is lost souls and, and this is what is it called again the doom journey of richard stanley's island of dr moreau this is fascinating now this is the three disc edition there are different editions this is the house of pain edition uh, what does the House of Pain edition have as compared to the other editions? Well, the first one, and, and the first disc, it is loaded. No, this is not a pick of video. These are suggestions for the upcoming Black Friday sale. So, like, the first disc is loaded with commentaries and interviews and stuff like that. Then the second disc, oh, dude, you got to see this. Richard Stanley, who made movies like Hardware and Dust Devil, and recently uh, got... Recently, basically, well, he just came back recently. Oh, Edge of the Axe. Wanted to make All in Dr. Moreau. All in Dr. Moreau is his favorite. That's his favorite story. This is his dream. Uh, 
the, oh, I should have pre-ordered. This is his dream to make. This was his dream. Colorado Space. Thanks, Shadow. I forgot the name of it. Uh, and his dream went horribly, horribly wrong. Through bad weather, maybe curses, uh, the utter meanness of Val Kilmer and the oddness of a certain other famous actor. This is a fascinating, <laughs> fascinating documentary to watch. Is Blue Underground any good? The, as a comp, yeah, they, uh, they put a lot of good stuff actually. The lenticular ones I actually recommend because they, they usually have great transfers and some amazing soundtracks and some great stuff with it. So the second disc is on this is called the H.G. Wells Files, and on that you are going to get the Island of the Lost, which is a 1921 German version of Island of Dr. Murrow. You will get H.G. Wells on film, a feature written by expert Sylvia Hardy, and Richard Stanley talking about Wells as well. Oh, it's fascinating. If you like it at all, dude, uh, you've got to check this out. And uh, trust me, you'll thank me for it. And the bonus third disc is a CD-ROM. And what is the CD-ROM of? Well, it's an audiobook. A complete and full audiobook of The Island of Dr. Moreau, read by The Island of Dr. Moreau's biggest fan, Richard Stanley. So director Richard Stanley on the third one reads you the Island of Doc Moreau. And I'm not even kidding. And look how beautifully glorious that CD-ROM looks. Exactly. The movie, like the movie, like obviously the Marlon Brando Val Kilmer movie was made. Obviously it wasn't made by Richard Stanley. Although his version would have been much better than the version that got made. And it is fascinating to see all the things that went wrong on a guy trying to make his dream project. And to this day, he would gladly, if somebody would bankroll him, he would make. There is actually. It's called. Uh, it's called Doomed. Uh, yeah, but the the uh, Doomed is the name of the documentary on the Fantastic Four. Should be actually not too. Shouldn't be too expensive to get. Uh, and uh, it's a really fun one too. Next up, House on Straw Hill. I don't know the director of Doomed. Uh, I just remember watching it. Actually, I got that's one of the times when I did get a digital copy because uh, my cousin had given had given me an iTunes card, and I uh, I don't really play a lot of games and stuff. So at the time, it was right after Christmas, and iTunes was having this like superhero sale on the Fantastic Four. I don't remember now. Actually, he's in the documentary. <clears throat> so I just bought like the Doomed and about like three seasons of Superboy. Uh, and a couple other things. Oh, they do have certain. I would like to see them put a new edition out. House on Straw Hill. Definitely worth checking out. And if it still has it, it's got the Band the Saddest Videos documentary, which is pretty cool. And last but not least, one that is going to be Udo Kier. Roxit and Linda Hayden, who doesn't like that movie, but I don't care. She's damn good in it. All the colors of Jallo, and this was the box set. This was, by, slip was exclusive to the uh, there, and I had to like cover it up. All the colors of the dark. I had to cover that because that is a half nude Edwidge Finch, which I didn't want, did not want to show on camera because YouTube getting a lot stricter. Is it a weak one? Well, people say that nowadays, but you know, it's a regular one. It's uh, not like a hard one. There is a maniac that is a hammer horror film. Uh, that's uh, that's by Cur that stars Curran Matthews. But the maniac that I think most people are referring to here is a Joe Spinell film that came out in the 80s. Uh, you know, with Carol Monroe. Missing out comments here.
For Blue Underground, uh, Zombie, definite pickup. Uh, Maniac, another one that I strongly recommend. Maniac Cop came in. I love Maniac Cop. There's three of those. And in case you're wondering why I go off camera, basically, I'm not feeling the best tonight. <laughs> still, I'm getting over it, but I'm still a little... Nose rainy, and I don't do that on camera. Two of lies, for some reason, came here, apparently for two days, on, went completely out of print, and only scalpers are, have two evil eyes on a... I'm not sure maybe it didn't come over. Maybe Two Evil Eyes is an American release uh, because we didn't get it here. Uh, and it's super expensive on Amazon CA. Wait a minute. Where did you get it at? I was looking for that one for ages. You're so lucky to have those stores nearby. Because you know how much it costs here? Like, if I go to Amazon to pick up two evil eyes, it's going to cost me $89. Like, like let that sink in. $89. The church is kind of... And unofficial demons three actually. Chapters though don't sell movies; they only sell like uh, books and uh, magazines and electronic reading devices. They used to sell phones, but they don't sell them here anymore. But Chapters has stopped Barnes and Noble several times from coming here. You didn't get it on Amazon though, did you? You bought it when the stores. You buy that, like, because you live in Ontario, <laughs> where there are Bay Street videos and Cinema Ones. And I live in North Sydney, where there's Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, I doubt I'm getting my hands on two evil eyes anytime in the near future. Is there any two copies of the same movie that I didn't know that I had? Uh, or that I... I saw be it, be cast. <laughs> uh, get Dolomite for sure. Uh, go for the first two. Go for Dolomite and Human Tornado. I, th I think that's what I go for because those are those two are actual Dolomite films. Uh, now, unless you want to go like for really different ones, um, there's four films that he put out. Uh, Dolomite, which is a must. Uh, that's like hands down. If you're going to get one Rudy Ray Moore film during the Vinegar Syndrome sale, you're going to get Dolomite. That that's one you got to get. Uh, if you want to go for something that's not Dolomite for the second one. Disco Godfather is a message film, actually. Oh, the way seven viewers the nine viewers. I guess people didn't like my talking about some Dolomite. <laughs> it doesn't show how many viewers are on my... Did I really go down to nine viewers? I'm kind of depressed now. <laughs> it says 37 on my thing right now. That's what it says. Uh, you're trying to mess with me, Jesse. <laughs> Disco Godfather is an odd film for him. It's 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 a bit of a weird one. It's a uh, it's a bit of a, but it's a fun one. Uh, Petey Wheatstraw is the oddest one. Uh, it's kind of like a, a comedy with a bit of like horror sort of aspect to it. He's got his pimp cane. 
uh, all of them are fun I mean I would go with the first two, uh, or at least get one dolomite and get one of the other ones so that's what I'd uh, that's my suggestion get dolomite for sure and then just grab one of the other ones I think you're right <laughs> you might need to refresh We keep we keep forgetting like that movie we haven't I haven't watched the movie yet. Hey George, welcome, dude. You got some pickups yesterday. I saw that. Well, does it work? Keeps going up and down. I shall never get to the to the epicness of forty. CPU. It's a big one to be excited for. <laughs> There's a lot. If you guys could pick one thing, one thing from the from you from the sale, if you could grab. <laughs> oh man, I'm a huge fan. Um, If you could grab one thing from this upcoming vinegar, well, vinegar sun, Black Friday sale, what would you get? Question everybody out there. What would you get? And what title do you think you're not going to get, but you're interested in? For me, like Jesse, it's the Angel box set. That's, that's the number one for me, the Angel Trilogy. The one that I don't think I'm going to get, but I really want, is the Wild World of Jane Mansfield. <clears throat> I'm fascinated with Jane Mansfield, and uh, I'm a huge fan of her daughter too, who stars in Law and Order SVU. Uh, but uh, Mariska Hargitay. You can't just go on. But if you had to decide, if Javid, if it came down to it, somebody said you can only pick one. <clears throat> Like I want Tammy the T-Rex 4K. I really do. Uh, I really want to support their go into 4K. Oh, Dale, it's a different one. Mondo, Ballardo, Jane Mansfield. I got a feeling that's what my dad would go for. Who's putting it? The the box set. The Camp Blood box set. Like I got some Camp Blood like titles here. I got the first three. They're uh, they're films. They're unique films. I, I enjoy them. But they're uh, as it get, as it goes on farther, they get uh, weirder, uh, <laughs> like way weirder. <laughs> but I, I think they should stay with the simplicity of the original Camp Blood. <clears throat> I think part three is caught in the woods, right? And secret films. I wonder what they are. Somebody asked me earlier, do I have any idea what the other VSA is going to be? I don't. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the Vi that I could be wrong, but Voice Academy is going to be one of them, like the Voice Academy trilogy. Uh, I'm pretty sure Voice Academy, the tri well, I'm going to say trilogy. There's six Voice Academy films, uh, but I'm going to I'm guessing they're going to put out the first three. You have to remember, see, <clears throat> or they could do VSA three and four. It could be Voice Academy one and two on. On, on one set of Vice Academy and four on the other. They want to go like that. Uh, Rick Sloan directed Vice Academy. Rick Sloan also directed Hobgoblins and he directed The Visitants and he directed Blood Theater. Sex Road is a good movie, actually. It's a really good movie. Savage Harbor is still available from all I know. Uh, but uh, the Evil Town's one that sold out. Oh, they just answered it too. Yeah, I know. I'm not big on the, doing the exclusive slips for pre orders type of thing. I feel like if you're a fan and you can't, like I couldn't, afford the pre order title uh, that. You're getting like you feel like you're getting you know you're getting shafted a bit, uh, just because you couldn't afford it at the time. 
Uh, you could be ready, you know, to, and spend a bunch of money like on their Friday Black fr Black Friday sale, but just because you couldn't get get it during the pre-order, you miss out on stuff. You do actually. I like Evil's of the Night a bit better than Evil Town, but but I like them both. Wouldn't two boxes that's be too much for one month? Not really. Not, well, I don't. The, I don't think the VSA one is going to be done like a box set. Oh yeah, it, that came at first. It has a great cover too. Well, they did say Warlock that there is two VSA titles coming out, but four VSA films. Hey Dungeon, welcome. <clears throat> you finally got around to watch him yesterday? What'd you think of him? You like it? Evil Town grows on you. Hey, welcome. Well, a lot of them Ragman are gonna be half off. So half off the suge the suggested manufacturer, retail price. Um I always recommend that they're closed up. Vinegar Center's closed up now. No, I am not positive. I do not know anything for sure. I'm making your bad man <laughs> uh, educated guesses <clears throat> when it comes to this. What I do know is that there are four movies coming from for the v there's two VSAs being put out, but there's four films within those two VSAs. That makes me think that. Because Rick Sloan mentioned that they're working on it. No, no, the the Vinegar Center Black Friday sale usually runs from Black Friday to Cyber Monday. But if you want to get some of the real limited stuff, like limited editions, so some slip covers, some that over have over a hundred, uh, that have less than a hundred things, then those you want to get early on. Where are my brethren is one that I'm not going to get this time around, but I really would like to get. I, I do. I mean, I think. Let's go over here. I got to put some stuff back, so let's do this. I really think that uh, that it could be the. Get this right. I really think that we're looking at the. Uh, Not everything. Like most everything is going to be fifty percent off. I, I do plan to stay up late. I'll be out of town, but uh, I do plan to uh, to stay up late. I'm think I'm going out of town just for one day, actually, uh, for that night. So I will be literally out of town. I'll be coming back very early that night because I work the next morning, and uh, it's Black Friday, and I work. You know, I, I'm working Black Friday, so uh, and it's real kind of the busiest time of year for the place that I work at. So uh, I definitely don't want to let them down when it comes to that. I will be doing a video <clears throat> on Black Friday afterwards. I'll be exhausted, more than likely. What, what distributor is not a company anymore? Well, I can think of a couple. Uh, BSI is, <laughs> is no longer one. American Dreamer. I love that American Dreamer, but I can't afford it this time around. I'll be right back. I gotta get my uh, things over here. Ah. All right. This is gonna kill me. <clears throat> Elite Entertainment is what no longer around. That is a really. I'm interested in mommy and mommy too, but I'll tell you one thing. Um, one thing that doesn't 
that makes me less interested is I just don't like the cover. Uh, is it just me? Does anybody else find the cover kind of bit iffy on those? Anchor Bay's still around, but it's almost like they're not. They're one of those companies that, uh, you know, they were big, really, really big back in the day. By the way, anybody that doesn't have Incubus, please pick that up during the Vinegar Syndrome sale. It's a great release, and it deserves to be picked up by everybody. I am still here, but I am making sure of something, because I want to do more moving around on this video, which means... I gotta put this back first. Ta-da. <clears throat> no, Turn Extreme kinda went out when uh, when uh, J-Horror did. They, they went big with J-Horror. And they went out with J-Hor. That's why you find a lot of Titan Extreme releases at your local dollar store, Dollarama, places like that, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, um, depending on where you live, or Poundland. Uh, you'll notice that you're going to see a lot of Titan Extreme that kind of show up there, and that's the reason. And I want to see the comments that I missed. I mean, am I planning on picking up? Very few. Uh... It's just going to be a year that it's going to be kind of, kind of lower, so I'm just going to be very, very careful with what I pick up. Angel Trilogy is the one I want for sure. That's the, that's that's the given. That's that's the most one one. I I do, if I can afford it, I want to get both the VSAs. Because I started collecting the VSAs, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be one of those things that I miss out on. Uh, they do sell out, and I got a feeling that VSAs are going to catch on. Uh, does anybody here not have or not know what a VSA is? Uh, I've highlighted them in a lot of my videos, uh, but everybody knows or has like a Vinegar Syndrome archive like release, right? Because it is one of the more neater. Like new things that came out. You got full size posters and no order size this time around. Uh, but I do, I film, I like it. I, I got it during the last sale. My size part of Murders is actually a pretty good one too. Like, I want the new VSAs, they're more, they're gonna be more expensive. I want the Angel trilogy. Um, I would love to have uh, the uh, Wild World of Jane Mansfield, but I can't go from two different companies. Uh, I, I just I can't afford to do that somehow. Oh, well, Less Than Dust is, wouldn't be a VSA. That one's already out. I don't have Corruption. It's a strongly wanted on my list, actually. I'm a huge Jamie Gillis fan. I think Jamie Gillis... There's a bunch of, black, of back catalog toes that I want. Uh, they're... Uh, oh, man, I wish I had my... I can't bring them up either. Uh, there's a uh, what's it called the phone book is one that I've that I've always wanted to grab. Uh, there are a few of the uh, like well like I don't have uh, I don't have Sexland. That's uh, that's the title that I do want. Uh, and some of the actually adult titles too. How do you find VSA? Well, VSA titles they're specific to Vinegar Storm. They only come out, like, there have only been two out so far. Uh, here's a... Uh, this one, this VSA title is uh, still available. Uh, and you know it because it's one that comes out like this. Uh, so yeah, it's a new thing for Vinegar Syndrome. It's like a, this is a hard box, and uh, 
for if you really haven't seen the VSA titles, one thing that you should know about is uh, is this. Uh, if this freaking thing is so, <laughs> uh, they have uh, full size posters. And they're uh, double sided. It makes me want to buy an avocado for him. Somebody's seen this film. I am actually. I'm headed to Halifax for a day. I got one day off next week. It's Thursday. And I will be going to Halifax that day. To uh, see my kitties. I think I am anyways. As far as my better half said, like... I think... No, Wednesday. Because Thursday is Black Friday. Whatever. Thursday, I think, today I got off. Arrow does some great stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of Vinegar Syndrome titles that I don't have, like the early stuff. Uh, stuff like Psychic Killer, I, I would love to have. Uh, there's like titles uh, like Beware My Brethren. Uh, some of the ones like, uh, God, what's the name of it again now? I s Telephone, I definitely need a telephone book. I'm so far behind on some of those releases. Tell you what, so I know you guys appreciate it. Let's, let's turn the camera this way. Cause I know, there you go. Is made on demand DVD our format any good? It's pretty good, I mean, it depends. I wouldn't per if you could, if you have the choice and you, and you know the and you know at the time uh, get a uh, get ones that are pressed as opposed to burnt burnt ones will corrode over time uh, but uh, pressed ones last a lot longer so if you, like if you burn if you were like back in the day and you like you download stuff offline and you uh, burnt it off you know, on a disc uh, that you know that that erodes that corrodes after time. Uh, and companies do that too. Like I'm not talking about like you. I mean like there's certain companies that put it like um, like on demand stuff. But uh, try to get the try to see like look in advance to see if there's press discs. If it's press discs, then uh, then definitely made on demand are worth are worth getting those. Warner Archives does a lot of those. So this is my vinegar syndrome uh, area. A lot of these are going to be on sale. <laughs> Probably not good because it's not mine. It's my better house. So that that's that one is totally on her. She's our res. She's the resident like anime collector. She grew up with it actually. Um, as opposed to me, who got a lot of the Saturday morning cartoons and stuff like that, she was uh, she lived in Morocco, and their like cartoon programming was anime. They would have like a, a block of anime. I can't remember what the name it's called now. I gotta ask her sometime. So, <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'll run into you if I end up going to to Sunrise Records. I don't know if I'm gonna get there this time, but uh, who knows? Probably not because I'm gonna be probably saving all my money for uh, for the big sale. I'm a big fan. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm a big Vinegar Syndrome fan. This is the one that's coming back, guys. So uh, for the people that were kind of wondering about it, uh, they'll have it slip. But <laughs> that is, this is Wonder Woman, and there is reversible cover art, which I will show you. Which is actually pretty cool, pretty mod actually. So this is for people that are looking to get Wonder Woman. Oh, 
I didn't actually. I keep... I won't now till after the, the site opens again. I keep forgetting that. What do you think my badge level is? There's so many ones here that, uh, that I think people miss out on. Uh, two that I think people like usually forget is, uh, and I'm going to say like, you know, I, I think these are good films and I think that, that people should own them and, uh, Star Time and Blue Vengeance. People keep forgetting these, uh, keep kind of like passing, passing them by. But definitely look into them. See, my disc crack on the plastic part. I've had the, the plastic part crack, but not the disc itself. It, it's different. I mean, it's got Michael St. Gerard, who I love, Jorge. You know, Jesse, I love Jorge Stanley Five. And Michael St. Gerard, who I guess back in the day was probably most famous. Well, he was in a Beverly Hills now to an episode or two. But uh, he was, uh, I guess, more famous. He played Elvis. He played Elvis in like uh, in a miniseries, which actually spawned a short-lived uh, Young Elvis TV series. Uh, but it's a, it's a fun film. It's weird, but it's really cool. The, actually, this, I'll be honest, this artwork disturbs me. I didn't get this for the longest time because the artwork kind of kind of creeped me out. That That's the truth. Um Blue Vengeance is a fun film, and uh, is this the one with the extra movie on it? Yeah, it is, right? The First Man, a science fiction. I haven't watched this, the science fiction film. Played that I haven't seen. So uh, I hear good things about it, but I personally haven't seen it myself. But I do recommend it. If you like this, the kind of like the out there slasher horror stuff, and maybe you like you, White of the Eye was the film that you enjoyed, uh, then, you know, I think these will be right up your alley. There's a huge difference in watching a blood hook and watching like a star time or a blue or, a, or even like a, a blue vengeance. Very, very different. Snapshot, by the way, is, is a release, a vinegar cinema release that I've always wanted that I don't have. I won't be getting any adult titles this time around. I wish I was. There's, a, I'm really behind te, the Taboo series that were put out. I really would love to have those. Uh, and as silly as it sounds, I want to listen to the commentaries on the first Taboo. Uh, I really want to listen to those commentaries, so I hope they're good. Hey, MC. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uninvited, I guess everybody needs has that one or needs to have it. Evas of the Night, one of the best covers ever. But with that being said, <laughs> it would make me cry because I probably couldn't afford it. But I would love to have Taboo. So I love Taboo, that film. It's it's weird, you know. It's, it was just I grew up at that time period where I was like. It was, it's an odd film and it's, you know, definitely a weird subject matter, but, uh, it's one of the ones I grew up with. As weird as that sounds, it is. I was a huge K. Parker fan. Taboo has like three or four commentaries. I'm, I'm a huge commentary guy. Um. Uh, that I wouldn't recommend. It's not. It's hard to say because everybody's taste is is different. Um, but if you're going for, a, I was never a huge fan of Demonized. Uh, Blight and Melt. I don't own that one. That's a fantastic film. Hey, cool blue. Um, I was never a big fan of Demonized. It's probably I gotta watch it again. Um, but uh, that was a slower one for me. I like Wacko, and I think it's worth owning, but but definitely make sure it's on a discount. Out of my collection, what artwork do I like the most? Uh, didn't like Demon Knight. There's one, another one. Uh, so you didn't like Demon Knight either. 
I really, I really enjoy my, the, the Herschel Gordon Lewis Feast one. I've always been a fan. I know it's kind of weird and quirky. Uh, with No and I. I love the artwork on With No and I. I do have some Asylum Company films because I find them fun and cheesy. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of like art, like artwork that I could actually go into. But uh, With No and I just kind of stood out. <laughs> I don't know either. I had time and uh, and practice. Good British star comedy. I love it. No, With No Eye is uh, is Arrow Video. Uh, I think that per particular one is out of print, but you can buy the reg regular With No Eye. It's a great film. There, were, I don't. I I'm going to stand by the thing that there would never be a Peep Show. If you don't know, if you don't know Peep Show, it's definitely take it out. It's Mitchell and Webb. Uh, if With No Eye wasn't around, because there's different characters. There's definitely characters, especially one particular character in Peep Show that uh, stands out as being very inspired by With No Eye. Richard D. Grant and Paul McGann, actually, who would later go on to play Doctor Who, and who I first probably saw, Paul McGann, in Paper Mask, actually, one that I really liked. Super Soul Brothers. I, I've been looking at that one for a while. Oh, he actually would be. He, he played a bad guy in Doctor Who. He played the... Uh, uh, the high intelligence, actually. The by the way, happy Doctor Who Day, guys, because it is Doctor Who Day today. Fifty-six years ago to, today, Doctor Who uh, originally premiered. The Greasy Strangler is definitely more more recent than uh. The Prey. Which one? The, so people say The Prey and people think like either is it the Vinegar Syndrome Prey? Is it the Arrow Video Prey? Because there's so many. There's, there's so many different ones. You know how I feel about that net. You know I'm a big Jody Whittaker fan. The Doctor will live on forever. And for people that were not big into the into the last season, the trailer dropped for Doctor Who today for C Series 12. It looks really good. <clears throat> There's a lot of like older villains coming back. Hey, check the hell, I don't have that one. I don't blame you. Uh, I'll be honest with you. A lot of the episodes of, of, of series, series 11, they weren't well put together. It wasn't a well put together series altogether. Uh, wasn't Jody's fault. I do blame Chibnall. Uh, and I'm hoping he, that growing pains made him better. Obviously, you know, we had Stephen Moffat, not with the best starting either. But uh, look at the, the Series 12 trailer. It might win you over a bit, especially if you're an old school fan. A lot of people that didn't like series series eleven, and you know, a lot of people just don't like series eleven for whatever reason. Uh, and it's not me to say, okay, you got to like this. That's no, that, that, uh, I'm not going to spin that way. Um, but the uh, last year's uh, like New Year special was really good. If you have, if you didn't check it out, it's got a really good like daily episode. Probably one of the best daily episodes of the new series. Well, there, that's my geeky doctor stuff for the day. Oh yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I would totally agree. Did you see Kenny Clark in person, really? I don't know. See, the thing is that I think people, uh, once people got to see got to see Doctor Who and got to see Whitaker, they liked Whitaker, but they didn't like the way that Chibna was 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 running it. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, that's the big thing. I would have liked to have gotten another showrunner and kept Whitaker on type thing. They're, they're, I know that they're doing three series. At least. Uh, he's working on series 13 right now. 
Series 12 is finished and there is already like got plans for Series 13. So Chibnall and Whitaker on for, for three series is at least. I'm not sure if Chibnall will stay on after Whitaker. Usually three times. Like three series is, is pretty much like what a doctor goes. So who knows after that. Did I scare people off with my short Doctor Who conversation? It is officially Doctor Who Day and I had planned to do a video on it until I decided to do like kind of a Best of Black Friday type of thing. Uh, which I think uh, is, is pretty topical itself right now. It's going to be interesting, guys. It is going to be an interesting Black Friday, uh, especially for me. I, I'm limited this year, uh, like very limited, way more limited than I've ever been for any Black Friday in my entire life. Um, so that's going to make things interesting in a very different way. Well, Series 11 had great viewership. That wasn't the problem. Like, the problem was the was some of the writing in, in Series 11. The viewership was up in Series 11 than it was from, like, previous series. Like, way up. <laughs> There's a... A Doctor Who YouTuber... Well, he, he, he YouTube's tweets... He, YouTube's videos with Doctor Who a lot. And I, I don't want to say his name... Because I truly hate him. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he's completely negative all the time. And it drives me up the freaking wall. My best Doctor Who series. Ooh, good question. Like of, of the new series or the old series? Uh, I, like I'm old school. Like uh, I, But I, I like the new stuff. But I love, I love a lot of series. Series 4. Uh, with uh, with Donna and the whole Doctor Donna storyline, uh, I like that series three with uh with with Mar the Master. I'm I'm a huge Master fan, and uh, so that that was amazing for me. Play track three, um, for the original one, you got to go back to uh to a lot of the Tom Baker stuff. Uh, no, Tom Baker's on the, like the original. It's like Tom Baker, um. Uh, not the first. The first series is good, but it's, it's you know it's kind of because you got like the uh, you know the Dalek story and all that. But as you get into like the more gothic stuff, the more gothic horror, uh, that's when I think it really gets good. That's you know in, in my opinion. <laughs> I think the hard part for Doctor Who in the new series was like the later Moffat stuff. Uh, Peter Capaldi, I think, was a really great doctor with really, really bad, like, uh, unfortunately, had some some pretty bad writing, uh, except for the last series, like, uh, when he really got into that, and later. Oh, I, I actually did. Uh, I was a huge fan of, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the, you know, of Doctor Who all the way through. I grew up like, well, you got to understand. Hey, and ready, welcome, dude. We're talking Black Friday and apparently Doctor Who. I'm glad he hasn't. You do not know Dungeon Studio how many times like people like Spielberg have have looked at bringing Doctor Who to the big screen. Uh, it is the last thing I ever want to see happen to Doctor Who uh, because it, Doctor Who on the big screen is the death knell of like this is not like in the '60s when when Peter Cushing uh, was brought put him with the Amicus. Uh, oh yeah, like Doctor Who's big, like a Spielberg Doctor Who film is what kept Doctor Who, I think, is one of the main reasons that kept Doctor Who off TV for so long. Because uh, basically BBC were really counting on that happening. Your daughter rocks. Tell your daughter I said she rocks. Uh, <laughs> I like the Daleks. I mean, like they were never my favorites. Uh the Cybermen were my favorite villains on The Master. I know, but wouldn't that be kind of a killer thing? Uh, because he already did a Doctor Who. Like, it, Peter Cushing was already a Doctor Who that was like an earthling that um, created, like, that invented his own TARDIS. Uh, the, and they had, like, all kinds of, like, like big actors to go with, with it, and they were going to do, like, a big budget thing. I'm sure they, they use CGI and special effects and all that type of stuff. But as long as there's a Doctor Who on television, I don't want to see a Doctor Who film. Uh, I want to see like maybe like a, a big 
a season premiere, a uh, two-part episode, like run in the theaters, that type of thing. But I don't want to see Doctor Who uh, on the big screen by like a, like a Spielberg or I don't know, any of those guys. That's, that's just my thoughts on, the, uh, on that character. I lost like 10 viewers like just talking about Doctor Who. Shame on you guys. Uh, <clears throat> that left me because I talked about Doctor Who. I don't. I, I agree. Cool. Blue. I don't think it would work. It works. I mean, like back in the sixties, yes, when they got to see Doctor Who, because it was in black and white, and they got to see like Doctor Who on color in the big screen for the very first time. Uh, I'm sure that was fantastic. And if you were a kid growing up then, uh, it, it must have been amazing. Uh, but uh, but now your big your TV, you can you know most people got like a fifty five or sixty inch TV or even bigger. Grandma Tarkin, yeah, Peter, it was Doctor Who. Uh, for two films, actually, there was even like a, a song, like a Doctor Who, like kind of theme song, sung by like the little girl, that uh, I think was a bit of a hit, actually. My number one TV season, uh, my number one TV series is Doctor Who. Uh, my number one TV season of all time, I'm not really sure. Uh, Space 1999 series one is actually pretty good. Uh, like for like a like a sci-fi series. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't go out just because there's Doctor Who talk. Kudos to you, Jesse. Say, be like Jesse. Even though he wasn't big, he doesn't like Doctor Who, he's still here for the Black Friday talk. I appreciate that. Nope. Uh, there's some loss already. <laughs> But yes, it was uh, it was officially Doctor Who Day today. I actually brought a couple of Doctor Who magazines to work to read, but uh, it was so busy I never got a chance to like even open up a magazine. And I worked uh, a full eight and a half hour shift, and it was insane. All right, for people that go for the DVDs as well, uh, you know, you can actually get. There's still time for McGann. I always say there's still time for McGann. Uh, and him, McGann, McGann and, and Sheridan's Smith stuff uh, on the audios, excellent. I'm also a huge fan of a show called Two Points of Lager and a Pack of Crisps. Until they killed off the main character. Then I didn't like it anymore. Now, another thing that, that's going to be on sale that is going to be these here. Uh, so if you're a fan of like the, if you don't mind DVD, like I, I don't personally, uh, you can get a lot of really cool movies on uh, on DVD as well from Vinegar Syndrome, and you're going to get them for really cheap. So you're going to get like double movies that are going to be like super, uh, super cheap. Is Matt Smith your her, her favorite? My better half's favorite is Matt Smith. And of all the doctors out there, Matt Smith probably has the very best opening for any of them. Uh, because he's got the most badass opening episode for any doctor uh, that's out there. He Basically, there's a sequence where he's finally getting his costume. He's, uh, he's, he's dressing. The alien is this, this huge eye that's kind of coming down and looking at him. And it, like it scans things to get their information. He was the youngest doctor. Uh, before, it was held by uh, Peter Davison, but he became the youngest doctor. And there's a sequence at, in that episode where, she, where basically he says... She throws him a tie, uh, and he kind of like he he's tied up his bow tie, and he's and he's basically like, so you can scan, so you 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 can scan people. He said, I want you to to scan me, and I want you to look at what happens to people, the races that threaten this planet, and they scan them, and we see all these like flashes of like all these other races that were, yeah, you know, Cybermen, Daleks, how they got destroyed, basically the type of thing. And he just looks at him and he's like, run. It's one of the greatest scenes in Doctor Who ever. And I recommend you check it out. Sadly, after he left Doctor Who, because there was so much negativity within the fan base, he actually thought people didn't like him. All right. Uh, so as for like last time around, this movie here, Lust for Freedom, <laughs> she's good the writing hasn't been the best on her on her so far 
Uh, she's definitely cute. Uh, finally, a Doctor Who that the guy can lust over. Uh, like, I guess guys can lust after Doctor Who. <laughs> That's kind of a sexist thing to say. But, uh, but you know what I mean. Um, but she's, uh, she's really good. Uh, it's just, they got to give her more time. She's got to be able to do her own thing. I kind of hope this is going to be Livy Coleman. I'm a huge Livy Coleman fan, though. Uh, but I do like Jodie Whittaker. Uh, she was in a series called Trust Me that I really liked that didn't last long enough. So this was Lust for Freedom. This is a DVD that went out of print during the last Black halfway to Black Friday sale. Like, literally this one, like, people were rushing to get this one. Uh, this is a women in prison film. It's actually done by trauma. Uh, this is no longer available. So... There are going to be titles during the Vinegar Syndrome sale that are going to go out of print. Uh, whether it's a it's it's just a slip cover that's going out of print, whether it's an edition that has like like TV versions or different cuts of the film that are uh, that are going out of uh, <laughs> yeah. Or and don't forget that uh, that really dark episode, Dark Mirror that she was in. <laughs> Thanks, George. I appreciate that. Sometimes it might those dreadful things. Is no, I don't have that one actually. Uh, if you're a fan of the uh, like the drive-in type of stuff, uh, this one here, the Sierra Santiago one, Death Force and Vampire Hookers. I'm not going to lie, it's really fun. Uh, I definitely recommend it. And you know they do seem to have like a... that's okay, dude. Uh, uh, just because I'm a huge fan of it, I'm a fan of a lot of weird things and that that some people don't like. But that's okay. We're we, we have movies that we like together. <laughs> well, not really. I mean, no, it's not male chauvinist. Like, a, Doctor Who is not a man or a woman or... And Doctor Who is an alien from Gallifrey. <laughs> uh, the, you know, uh, <laughs> anybody can play Doctor Who. <laughs> We haven't had them like kind of like it does actually it's it's actually pretty fun um but like if you don't go for the for the volume four uh it's definitely worth checking out and this is gonna be like super like inexpensive uh to get um uh, now if you can get the uh like it, this is you know it's a dvd one uh obviously the it's you know volume four is gonna would be an upgrade there's no features on the Death Force versus Vampire and Vampire Hookers one, but it's actually a really cool one. But there's some good stuff on this one here. Like, uh, you if you get this one, man, you're gonna get Cry Wilderness. <laughs> well, I'm from Canada. To you, I'd be an alien. But the thing is that Doctor Who was was gonna be like a female, like back in the '80s, uh, but she turned it down actually. Um, this is a couple of times, so it's not the first time. Jodie Whittaker isn't the first time that they were going to do this, and this isn't a time where we're basically like, "Oh, we got to do this now because it's 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 the right timing for it." Uh, no, Doctor was originally supposed to be like was going to become female back, uh, like they 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 tied with doing making Doctor Who female back as early as like uh, when they're looking towards replacing Tom Baker actually, and uh, after that, what there was a couple actresses that were like. In the running quite a bit uh, and and they'll, they'll even tell you there's interviews about it but this actually is a pretty good one, volume four um i'm going back and forth but like two two completely different topics um So we got like Cry Wilderness here, super cheesy fun. Oh my God, it's way too much of me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then I lose like even more viewers. Uh, Vampire Hookers, which is really fun. Evil Come, Evil Go. I don't know if I watched this one yet. Uh, I've seen it years ago. Uh, don't remember it. Oh yeah, Helen Mirren. Especially like an older Doctor Who. I'm down with that, man. Uh, Teenage Seductress, Sandra Curry, which who, she is the uh, the sister of uh, of Cherry Curry, of course, and Maria, Maria Curry. Uh, they're twins. 
but Terry Curry was in the uh, excellent band The Runaways, which also had Lita Ford and uh, Joan Jett and uh, Mickey Steele, who would later go on to be a part of the, uh, the Bangles. Uh, I was a huge Runaways fan. Oh, that's right, because that had like the three moves on it. Is that the Wakefield? I'm a huge Joan Jett fan. I grew up in the 80s, you know, when like the, you know, Isle of Rock and Roll and stuff was coming out. Yeah, they're pretty much like, this is what it's meant to be. This is like a kind of a drive-in, kind of a grind OC collection. Now, be careful because like the one I just showed you in this collection here, that's regular, like, exploitation fare. Uh, now, this one here, Vixens of Kung Fu and Orange of Blue, you would think would be a regular, might be a regular kind of Kung Fu, like, exploitation, you know, type of film. Uh, but, uh... It's been a while. I'm pretty sure both of these are actually X-rated films. Uh, uh, Vixens of Kung Fu and Orange. I'm pretty sure they are. It's, yeah, I think they are. <laughs> so uh, just look when you're getting like a driving collection because some of them are regular ones, and other ones are uh, are more X-rated fare. Because before they put out uh, their uh, their peak ramas, they they did the driving collection, and the driving collection was a mixture originally of both uh, X-rated films and of exploitation grinders style films. So hopefully that, that helps a bit in that category. Uh, ones that I would really love to have are those two like box sets that they put out. Uh, they had like 12 films in them and they were like just really weird films. They, uh, the Pono collection, stuff like that. Obviously not this time around, but eventually I'll, I'll grab them. Um, so don't Hey Juan, welcome, dude. There's a uh, kung fu in it of sorts. Don't watch it for the kung. You're not going to watch it for the kung fu. Trust me. Um, it's the vixens portion of the kung fu that's going to be more important to you. On it, the pono room. Dad, I think, has both of those sets now. I have neither one of them. me but I will eventually get them down the road I am going to watch Dol yes because Dolomite he's all about the Kung Fu he knows his Kung Fu stuff all right let's lay here okay so <laughs> at a video that's gone over a hundred and twelve minutes long uh, looks like we're going to end this one for a night. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We may even expand this one into a second video. Black Friday is coming up. And I really want to dive into it even deeper. So if you guys have ideas or thoughts or questions about it. Then uh, definitely like, you know, let me know. If you're watching this video and it's, and, and it's not live, and you've got comments, uh, nice comments down below that you want to like, but something that you'd like to hear about. I will hopefully, fingers crossed, Javid, be picking up Tammy and the T-Rex 4K. That's what I, that's what, Tammy and T-Rex 4K and Angel Trilogy R2 and the, and the VSAs, if I can possibly afford them, that, that's what I would go for first. Uh, a lot of pen. Anyway, I'm Aaron. This is my movie library. You guys are the movie club. You guys rock. You guys are awesome. Uh, I don't know if I can afford it. We'll see. It depends on what they are. Uh, but have a fantastic night. Hopefully I will see you here again soon. And I'm going to a flea market tomorrow. Uh, just to like kind of look around and stuff like that. So it should be fun. Happy Doctor Who Day. No matter what Doctor Who you like. It doesn't matter. Just have fun with it. Have a great evening for me right now. It's time for tea.